Aberration is a unique multi-layered cave map with a more linear progression than most of the other maps. However, this map doesn't have a single flying creature. Think of it as Mother's Nature's way of saying, get your steps in. Now, the first section of the map is the surface. Now this place is a no-go during the day with the ground literally on fire. At night, it cools down just enough to make room for Reaper Kings, Nameless, and Seekers. Not exactly a peaceful evening, but if you're brave enough, you will find plenty of resources like oil, obsidian, metal, crystal, and the all-important element ore. You'll also find the obelisk and surface drops here, but you'll want to wait until you have a rock drink before exploring this area. The second zone is the green zone, and this is literally where you'll spend most of your time. Despite its dangers, it is the safest region on the map. Reapers and Nameless will not spawn here, and earthquakes have a lesser impact. However, watch out for the red-capped mushrooms or dizzy spores. If you encounter them, your screen will flash into a beautiful color of rainbows, your character will be harder to control, you'll start pooping like it's a marathon, oh yeah, and you might suffocate as well. Fun times. Now to avoid turning into a human sprinkler, make sure you consume the Arabic mushrooms, the brown ones. As you can see, by consuming it, it will take away the status effect and also give me protection from it. You can also wear a hazard suit or a tech suit. Now these red mushrooms are actually great ways to get early access to rare flowers and biotoxins. Furthermore, you won't actually find much metal or obsidian in the green zone, but you will find a plentiful amount of green gems. The blue zone. This region is packed with valuable resources like metal, obsidian, and blue gems, essential for crafting a variety of items. But with great resources comes greater dangers. The blue zone is much more hazardous than the green zone. Here you'll face waves of nameless, and if you're not quick enough to eliminate them, they might attract a reaper. But don't worry, once you have a glow pet, these creatures won't be an issue, as they only spawn in the absence of charged light. Your pet provides just that, so it'll keep you safe. However, you still need to watch out for Carcinoses and Aberrant Megalosauruses, who don't care about your glow pet. And beware of the blue spores and mushrooms scattered around. If you come into contact with them, you will get the freezing debuff, but to counter this, you simply need to find these odd fancy little mushroom piles and eat the aquatic mushrooms, or simply gear up with the hazard suit or the tech suit. The final zone on the map is the red zone, and it is a tough one. Unlike the other zones, the red zone is filled with radiation, so you'll need to wear a hazard suit or a fully powered tech suit, or have a lamprey attached to you if you want to survive more than a few seconds. To make things trickier, there are only a few creatures that are immune to the radiation, as shown on the screen, and any creature that is not immune will need to consume a mushroom brew, giving them two minutes of protection. The purple water is also deadly, so avoid it at all costs, unlike I, who decided to go for a swim. You'll also need a light pet to protect against Nameless and any Reapers you may encounter. However, despite the dangers of the red zone, it is home to some of the best resources. You're going to find Reaper Queens, which you can lead to get into your own Reaper King, as you can see. Clams that can be harvested for black pearls on the shoreline, Elemental, red gems, and plants that provide organic poly. You'll also come across Rock Drake Nest, where you can obtain your very own Rock Drake, and the terminal to the boss fight is located in this region too. Also keep in mind that there are only three artifacts on the map, and you'll find each one in each zone, specifically the green, blue, and red. I'm going to cover this in a separate guide. The next thing you need to know about Aberration is its unique day and night cycle. Basically, on the days that end with a 0, 1, 2, or 3, the day and night cycle is normal, alright? Standard day and night cycle. However, on days ending in 4, 5, and 6, the day is much longer, with about 90% of the time being daylight and the night being very short. However, on days ending in 7, 8, and 9, the cycle flips, giving you short days of about 13 minutes and a long night lasting around 90 minutes. Now, these long nights are the best times to go onto the surface. Earthquake. An environmental event that is unique to Aberration is Earthquakes. Now, when they hit, don't panic. They won't harm you, your creatures, or your structures directly. However, if you are using a climbing pick and decide to move during the quake, you might get knocked off and take some fall damage. Otherwise, you'll just find yourself getting bounced around a bit, especially as you venture deeper into the map. Now, on the bright side, the Earthquakes can drop some useful resources, like the ones shown on the screen. Now, gems. Let's talk about gems. Harvesting their resource nodes is the main and best way to get them. Green gems are found only in the green zone, blue gems are found in the blue zone, and red gems are in, well, the red zone. However, early on, blue and red gems can be tricky to get, and they are critical to most of the items in the game. Your best bet is to keep an eye out during Earthquake, where they can potentially spawn, or follow roll rats. The roll rats will occasionally dig underground and drop you some gems. However, you gotta be quick, because as soon as you grab those gems, Mr. Roll Rat is going to want to eat you for lunch. 
Gas balls. Now another essential item is congealed gas balls. Once you set up a gas collector on a gas vein, gathering them becomes much easier. Before that though, gas veins occasionally erupt, dropping a few gas balls on the ground. Just wait for the fumes to clear before you collect them or you're going to regret it. Now, Aberration also introduces some unique tech grams. Back in Ark Evolved, we got three tech grams, that being the Tech Rifle, Sleeping Pod, and the Rock Drake Saddle. Next up are Charge Nodes. Now, these structures are scattered throughout the map with two types, Hyper Nodes, only found on the surface, and Normal Nodes. Hyper Nodes charge your batteries faster, which is handy, and Charge Nodes also provide charged light protecting you from nameless and allow you to also craft a small amount of three element. But just remember, after crafting the element, the charge node will power down for a while. Next, let's talk about light pets. There are currently four on the map, Bulb Dog, Featherlight, Glowtail, and Shinehorn. These little creatures provide charged light, which can help scare off nameless and weaken reapers. Each light pet has its own strengths and weaknesses. For example, the Bulb Dog has the highest charge capacity, but the slowest recharge rate. The Glowtail on the other hand has the lowest charge capacity, but it recharges really quickly. To activate or deactivate their charge light while on your shoulder, just use the clapper mode. To tame these pets, you'll need to do this passively, either using the plant Z seeds, which is their kibble, or mushrooms. Now to get the plant Z seeds, you simply need to find a plant Z and just chill out for about a minute and then it will eventually drop you a seed as it's done for me right now. Thanks for watching. If you have any video suggestions or questions, please let me know in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Take care.